Luke, I am your father. Search your feelings. You know it to be true. Hello and welcome to the... I should take this off. Ugh. Hello and welcome to the channel. My name is Kai and today we're going to show you how to do one of the most iconic cinema effects and that is the lightsaber. All right, so let's jump into After Effects to figure out how we can add our lightsabers to our footage. We're in After Effects now, and here is a few seconds of footage of me playing around with lightsaber. And we're going to show you how we can add the saber effect onto our lightsaber, how we can mask around our head, as well as add in glow. There are several ways of creating a saber effect in After Effects. You don't necessarily need to download any plugins. You can create a shape layer, add glow to it, and then track the points to the lightsaber. But that is very time consuming. In order to make our life a lot easier, we're going to go to this website here, videocopilot.net. Click on the tutorials, scroll down, and for tutorial 159, you will find this tutorial called Saber Plugin. And this is what we want to choose for our effects and if you come over to the tutorial notes here you will see that you can download saber for windows and you can download saber for mac so i'm actually using windows at the moment so i'm going to download double click on the installer over here and you will need to restart your after effects or close down your after effects i'm just going to save my composition uh, i'm going to say yes and the installer is here yes i agree 2022 install the saber plugin has now installed and now back in after effects if we type in saber over here we will see that the video copilot saber plugin is now available in order to put this onto our composition we need to go to layer new oops let's click on the composition go to layer new solid and we'll create a solid at the same aspect ratio of our composition We'll call it Saber and we'll go OK. And so we've got our new solid and what we can do is drop our effects, our Saber effect onto that layer. And here it is in all its glowing glory. Now in order to make this usable so we can see the footage underneath, we need to go to our render settings and change the composite settings from black to transparent. And now you will see my footage underneath. What we can do now is keyframe our saber effect on top of our actual lightsaber here. So if I move forward in time, you'll see that our lightsaber, it's one of those flick down lightsabers and you'll see that it starts to, to come out this position. And what I can do is go over to my core start and core end and I could go to the start, which is down here and I can place it on the start of where my saber comes out and then for the core end I can click that onto the actual end of the lightsaber. Now obviously if I move this nothing is going to happen it's only going to be set for that frame so I need to keyframe these two positions and I can do this by going over to where it says core start and core end and clicking on both of these stopwatches. Now, if I move back in time, in fact, to make it easier to see where my lightsaber comes in, I can reduce the opacity of my saber layer by hitting T on the keyboard and bringing down the opacity and then clicking on the effect so I can still see the beginning and end point, but without the actual glow in between. So now with those keyframes set, I can hit U on the keyboard to see where my keyframes are. I can again select saber and then I can drag the beginning and the end keyframes in line with the movement of the actual saber. Because we don't actually see the lightsaber appear until this point in time, we can close up the layer or we can bring in the layer to that point in time. And now all I need to do is go across my footage with my saber preset selected and fill in where the points are. Now, as you can see, the point of the end of the lightsaber is off screen here. So I need to anticipate roughly maybe about there is where it will be. Now, if I quickly bring back the opacity here, 
What you will notice is that the Sabre plugin makes up the difference in the movement. So it creates this kind of flash look as the lightsaber comes out. So what I'm going to do now is just go ahead in time and see if I can just keyframe this correctly. And again, if I hit you on the keyboard with the layer, I should be able to see where those points are. And I want to go along and correct them. Now, generally what I will do is I will move maybe about 10 frames in time. So holding shift and pushing page down, give me about 10 frames of movement so I can cover a few seconds of footage relatively quickly and then I will go back and I will fill in the mistakes so I'm going to hit shift press page down move 10 frames ahead put my two points where I think they should be whoops if, if you lose your points just click on the saber effect up here again and you can see it keeps disappearing click on the point drag it to where you think it's going to be because it's off screen shift page down again that's the bottom there's quite a lot of movement here so i'm going to have to refine this in a minute uh, shift page down i think at this point in time i actually swing the saber around shift page down shift page down and every time i'm just moving 10 frames ahead just to get an idea in fact i can also just gauge it roughly because I will come back in a second just to correct a lot of this and again over here and now it's gone behind my head here I have to guess where it's going to be roughly so I think it's probably going to be about there shift page down again shift page down again and I'm going to come to the end of my sequence or the end of my where I've closed my sequence here and if I turn the opacity back up to 100 now I'm going to have a rough view of how my lightsaber should be looking and you can see it's totally not following the late lightsaber completely but you get a general idea of how it should look so what i'm going to do now is just go along and refine those points i'll start in the middle here i'll click on saber i'll hit t so that i can bring the opacity down hit u again to see all my keyframes and then i will hit on saber and then start to fill in the gaps in the middle so i'm going to scrub through this now very quickly Okay, so for the most part, this is looking not too bad. We're going to turn our saber effect back on by going over to our saber, hitting T, uh, putting the opacity up to 100. And let's have a quick preview of how our effect looks. There's quite a few things here that we need to correct. So the first thing is I can still see quite a lot of the green lightsaber. So in order to correct that, I can increase the glow intensity. So as I increase the glow intensity, hopefully it covers more of the actual plastic green of the lightsaber. As you can see, it's not looking too bad. I can also mess around with things like the core size and the spread of the glow as well as the bias so all of these things that you will want to tweak yourself in order to cover whatever you're using if it's a broomstick or actual lightsaber that's up to you now what i want to do as well is add some flicker so i'll add in some flicker intensity let's just see how that looks at 33 percent you'll see the lightsaber now is flickering. So this isn't looking too bad at the moment, but there is a massive problem here, and that is the lightsaber when it goes behind my head, the actual glow is now in front of my face. If I just turn off the effect, this is where the lightsaber should be. So what we need to do is we need to create a mask around my head so that the actual lightsaber can sit comfortably behind my head we want to go to just before 
the lightsaber goes in front of my face, which is here. And I want to duplicate this layer. What I'm going to do again is I'm just going to T down my effect by hitting T and bringing the opacity down. And for this new layer, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring it right into just before the lightsaber goes behind my head. And I want to actually create a mask around my face. So I'm going to zoom in. This is where I want to start creating a mask. So I'm going to hit the pen tool up here, make sure that my layer is selected. And I'm going to draw a mask around my head. All the way around my head head and hair maybe around my scarf as well so now if I hit M on my keyboard with the layer selected I can select that layer mask and hit the stopwatch and then I can move forward the same way we did with our keyframing of the lightsaber we'll move forward in time and if I select mask path I can actually drag all of these points at the same time and I can continue to do that all the way until the lightsaber comes through the other side of my head. Also for this mask I'll hit F and I'll feather the mask slightly so that it blurs out those sharp edges and what we have now is the saber behind my face. It's not looking too bad there's still a few tweaks that we could make in order for this to look more realistic we need there to be perhaps a blue glow on the arm, some of this armor here. Well, we can do that by, again, duplicating our layer. So we hit Control D or Command D if you're on Mac. And we'll go to when the actual lightsaber makes an appearance, which is about here. So this is when we want our glow to really start. After that, we can go to our Effects and Presets box and write in Tint and Color Correction Tint. We will put that on top of our layer. And what we want to do is we want to pick the blue color. So that's the kind of color glow that we want on our character. Then I want to take my pen tool and I want to start creating another mask around half of my character, say, where that glow is going to be roughly. Something like that. Then I can hit M on the keyboard to bring up my mask properties. I can hit F to bring up the mask feather and then I can feather that. And we start to see a little bit of this glow here. Now to make this actually glow, we can write in glow on our keyboard, stylize glow. And I again can put that on my layer and you'll see that it's added it in in a little bit of a strange way. What I can do is I can actually composite the original on top and then I can bring down some of the parameters here. So the threshold, the glow radius. And also I can hit T on the layer and bring this down maybe to about 50%. So I have this type of glow on my character now. As it comes in, it's not gonna be a, a glow immediately. So I can hit T on the keyboard to bring up the opacity again and move forward in time and then again put another keyframe go back in time and set my first keyframe to zero so now what will happen is the glow will appear gradually over time so about like that again what i want to do is go to my mask by hitting m selecting the path uh, and keep selecting the stopwatch on the path and then moving this in line with my character so around here it comes in and we probably want the intensity to be more as it comes up to my face so in fact I'll go back to the transparency pull this down and it will appear more as the lightsaber comes up towards my face so let's see that probably even more subtle than that I probably will take this down to 40% and let's see it and maybe even have it at very light opacity there we go And 
and now we have a glow on our character and again we can modify our mask by hitting M and maybe pulling in some of these keyframes as the lightsaber moves around the character. And then what I will want to do is repeat the glow again for the other side of my character and I will also want to incorporate glow onto the head that I cut out earlier. So that was a breakdown on how to download the Sabre plugin to add it to your live footage and also to create a mask so that the Sabre looks like it's behind your head and also a glow for those realistic lightsaber effects. And this is a great place to mention that if you haven't done so already, don't forget to add yourself to the Kai Creative Facebook and Instagram feeds where you can stay up to date with all of our photography sessions, video productions, short films, camera reviews and other creative happenings. So hopefully this tutorial has helped you. We're actually doing things a little bit different on the channel where we're not just doing camera reviews but we're doing more tutorials for After Effects, Premiere Pro, Photoshop and Illustrator and hopefully these will help you in your creative endeavors. So let me know what you think about that down in the comment section below. If you've got any effects that you want us to try out, then again, let me know in the comment section. If you found this video useful, don't forget to give us a thumbs up. And if you haven't done so already, don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel. And also don't forget to hit the bell button for notifications. So that's it from me today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. All that I've got left to say is stay creative, stay safe, imagine, implement and inspire. And I'll see you in the next one.